Hi, it's Jenny from Buggy Baby, and today we're taking a look at two of Huck's pushchair sets. We're looking at the Walk and Care set and the Move So Simply set. Today we're taking a look at the Huck Move So Simply set. This set also includes a carry cot and it retails at just under £420. You can use it from birth all the way up until your child is about four years of age. It takes your child to 22k and then you can have an extra 3k in the basket. If you wanted to, you can also purchase this push chair on its own um, instead of buying it as a set with the carry cart. So we're going to get this out of the box, build the push chair up, and then we can take a look at all of the features. We're taking a look at this in the dark navy colour. And if we open it up, I'll show you what we get inside the box. Okay, so you see here, all nicely packaged up. And what I'm going to do is get everything out. I'll lay it all out so you can see exactly what the contents are. So here's the contents of the box. You have got the seat unit. We've got here a carry cot, which has got a mattress included, a bumper bar. Here's our rear wheels, our front swivel wheels, a rain cover, and of course the frame for the push chair. So the first thing we need to do is pop our wheels on. So these are just going to slot straight onto the frame. So all you'll need to do is, here's the rear ones, pop it in until it makes a little click. And here, really easy to do. There we go. All four wheels on, nice and easy to do, so there's no problems there. And then we can attach our seat. And if you see here, this is where we're gonna pop our seat on. And you can actually have this seat uh, forward facing or parent facing, which is great. On that pops to the frame. So push chair set up, we're going to take a look at the carry cot now and get that ready. So as I said, it already includes a mattress. It's quite a thin mattress, but it looks plenty comfortable enough. And these carry cots come flat pat like this. So that's really useful for once you've finished using it and you need to store it away somewhere and keep it safe. Or perhaps if you haven't got much space to store the push chair and the carry cot in, it's really great that that just goes completely flat so it's gonna be easy for storage. Now to get it set up, let's just get inside. You can see here, oh, have a look and see what that is in a bit. You can see here we've got these two bars with these fabric straps in, on, on them already. So what we have to do to get this carry cot in place is to move these bars across so that they are sitting on these ridges here. So you're going to pull this one into this ridge, that one into that ridge. Now I can tell you now, I already know this is really difficult to do because I've not long done a huck carry cot with exactly the same mechanism and it really takes some force to get it into place. So do be careful when you do it. It unfortunately is not a simple thing to do. Right, so I'm going to try and show you. You have to kind of raise the material up when you do it and then pull. I'm keeping this in place with my knees so it doesn't move around and then pull that bar into place like that. And it's easier if you use both your hands to do it and just rest the carry cot against you so that you, you've got it stable. It's a real, real tug, but we will get it there. There we go, oh, okay. So it is great that it folds up flat, but that isn't the easiest mechanism to get it in place. Right, that's all done. You can see there when you do that, you've got all of this side material that goes into place. Then you can pop your mattress on top. There we go. Okay, so 
terracotta is really nice and stable once you've got it up. It's a really good size. So you can see here, you've got like a black outer and then we've got that navy blue on the hood with a little neon rim. Mattress is plenty comfortable enough. This is really nice, quite soft, you know, very plain, but nice and soft and cozy. And included, you've got a navy apron to match the navy of the hood with your little neon huck sign and little neon rim all the way around it. And this is a decent thickness. Not as thick as some aprons that you'll find, but it's going to keep your child warm enough and keep them protected. And there's little poppers on the side for you to attach that apron on. There we go. And before we do that, you can see here, we've got a zip going all the way around, which is going to allow you to remove the material on the sides and give it a clean if you need to. So this apron, doesn't zip on it simply works with the poppers get that around your side there we go okay there we are so if we have a look at the hood pull this up that clicks into place so you would use these little buttons on either side to move that hood down if you want to or have it all the way up and it looks like that hood is also removable because we've got a zip there as well so it's um upf 50 plus so you've got some protection on there and you can see that you've got loads of coverage if your little one's in there they're completely protected from the sun or wind or anything else so yeah that's that's nice i like the curry cart so the little package that we found inside i think these are adapters for us to be able to put the curry cot onto the frame of the push chair right back to the push chair okay overall look it doesn't look like a particularly expensive push chair it does look like quite a budget push chair if i can say that it's quite a shallow seat and quite a slim seat as well it's got a little bit of height to it but it does look like quite a small seat especially um the footrest here looks really tiny and it is not soft material it's quite a harsh material there is a decent amount of padding on there i would say if you were going to use the seat unit from birth it would be nice to put a good soft uh, liner on there just to give your little one not only a bit of comfort but a bit of protection as well overall look of it though i'd say it looks pretty decent for the price considering you get the curry cot included as well right let's start off by having a look at the wheels so the wheels are eva plastic that means that they are no good for rough terrain but they will be perfect for urban use you might get away with going over a few bumps on it because i can see here this coil is the suspension so that will make it okay to go over a little bit of uneven ground but if you're looking for something for countryside walks this won't be the one for you these plastic tires will be no good so they're a decent size for the front swivel wheels and they lock as well so there's a button here that will lock them for you and if we spin it round we can see here the rear wheels are um, a little bit bigger and let's have a look if we can see the suspension here so no suspension on here it's just those front wheels that have a decent amount of suspension on them taking a look at the seat unit i can see here we've got two heights for our straps to go through so if you wanted it on the lower setting you would just need to re-thread the strap from the back of the push chair and then push it through the seat and if you've got a tiny one in here what you can do is pull the straps through these loops which is going to bring it lower still and so if you've got a small baby in there we'll just make sure that the straps are sitting correctly on them and won't rub on their neck or their face having a look here at the harness this is a five point harness bog standard nothing fancy about it at all um, you can adjust everything though so you're going to be able to get a perfect fit for your child and we also have these chest pads a nice plain blue just matching the rest of the push chair and the protection here on the strap which is going to make it more comfortable for your child now 
as I said the seat does look quite small it is quite a shallow seat here and you don't have any side material on the side so there's no real protection for your small child they'll be quite exposed um, that might not bother you it's always something I look at on a push chair I quite like to have high sides especially if it's from, you're using it from birth um, but when they're sitting upright, it doesn't matter as much. It's just when they're lying flat, it's nice to have those little sides to cocoon your child in. Have a look at this footrest. As I said, it's very small. It is adjustable. So you've got these white buttons on the side. You can bring it down for when your child's bigger and their feet are hanging over. And if they're sleeping or they're smaller, you'll want to have that up so they've got a nice place to rest their feet. Although the material isn't soft in any way, it does look like a material that's going to be really easy to wipe clean so that's going to be good so it'll be easy for you to maintain the great thing about the seat unit is you can have it world facing or parent facing so to do that you need to use these white buttons and that's going to lift off the seat unit so if we push them in try and do it It's not actually particularly easy because you have to get the seat unit in your hands whilst pressing the buttons so this is interesting here we go okay so you're going to have to do it holding it from the bottom so use your thumbs then use the rest of your fingers to get to the bottom of the seat and that will lift it off there we go and then you can spin that round pop it back into place you can slide it back on There we go. And then you can have it parent facing, which is a really nice feature for a slightly cheaper push chair. Let's attach this bumper bar as well. So included is a removable bumper bar and that's just gonna slide into place. There we go. And if you want to, you can just take one side out when you're getting your little one in. Pop that in, put it in the right way. So the white buttons need to be sticking out, obviously. And you just press on that, pull one side out, and it will rotate out of the way for you to strap your child in. Another nice feature of this is that the handlebar is adjustable. So if you want to adjust it, you've got this button just here. All you're gonna do is press that in, and then you can move it down and up. So here is the lowest setting. This is the highest setting and the great thing about having an adjustable handlebar is it means if you're purchasing this and perhaps your partner is a lot taller or shorter than you, both of you are always going to find a really comfortable position to push the push chair in. So it's really useful to have. Quite a rare feature to find on a push chair. Normally only find it on a expensive push chair, so it's nice to have it on a mid range one. Next up, let's have a look at the brake. So it's a really simple brake system. Put your foot on that, push it down. That's going to lock the wheels in place. Use your foot to kick it up and then you're unlocked again. And whilst we're down here, let's spin this around to have a look at the basket. It is a decent sized basket. You're going to get a bag in there, a coat in there. It's very shallow, so there's no protection at all on either of the sides. It's just something you'll need to think about. Perhaps don't put any valuables in there because other than these side nets, you haven't got anything protecting your stuff. We'll take a look at the recline. You can see here I've got this little handle bit that we're going to push up to bring the seat down. So if you take a look at it now, this is in its highest position. And I think it's got three positions. So that's the first one. So we're going to... Click that up and then let it down into its next position. Here we are, so that looks like it's about midway. And then again, this is on its lie flat position. So there are three positions available. And where I was talking earlier about the sides, you can get a really good idea about if you had a smaller baby in here and they're lying flat to have their nap, how exposed they are without having any sides on there. Um, as I said, it might not be anything that bothers you or bothers your child. It's just something that I always look at. And next up, we'll take a look at the hood. So that will be on its full 
full position the hood so it doesn't really give you much coverage at all it's quite a disappointing hood actually it's quite flimsy it's thin material and it's quite clunky as well so nothing too special on the hood there let's bring the seat up and see what it looks like when we've got it in the upright position okay so it's much better in the upright position you've got a lot more coverage there but it still is quite a flimsy hood let's spin it around i think we've got some mesh on here somewhere okay yeah so you can bring this bit of material over and you've got some mesh there that's going to give you ventilation in the summer months and also you'll be able to keep an eye on your child as well next up we're going to look at the fold and i do believe that we need to be um, forward facing to fold the pushchair down so we're going to have to now take this seat unit back off so thumbs on there we go spin that round Click it back into place. Right, let's lock the wheels while we do this. Okay, so they're calling it a one hand fold. We will see if that is true. And you need to get the seat in a forward position before you can fold it down. So we're gonna use that handle that we use to recline the push chair, but instead of coming backwards, we're gonna come forwards with it. So click it up, push it forward as far as it will go. And then you've got this white handle here, which we're gonna pull on, and that should bring the seat down even further. There we go. And now we need to move the handle into place. Now I know from doing this for another Huck push chair, which had the same mechanism, that it was really difficult to do, and I couldn't do it first time. In fact, I couldn't do it second time either, but we'll give it a go. So you've got a little button here, You've got this button that we use to push the handlebar down. So you'll need to have the handlebar up to close the pushchair down. So you're gonna press both those buttons. And then what you should be able to do is quickly push the handle down, give it a little jerk, and then push it backwards like this, and it should close. So let's go. There we go, okay. That wasn't bad that time. And there you have it in its closed position. When you've closed it down, there is, if I can find it here, I don't know if you can see it, but there is a clasp that will automatically close the frame up. But what it won't do is close the seat unit up. So if you were to move this around, you just need to bear in mind that that frame, sorry, the, the seat unit will need to be held onto, otherwise it's just gonna fall back down. The fold is not too bad, the size of it. You'll definitely be, get, be able to get this in most car boots. And of course, if you wanted to, you could just take that seat unit off and store the frame and the seat unit separately, which will make it easier really to, um, if you've got a small space to get it in your boot, or if you've got not enough space at home to store it at home. Um, it's quite clunky with those wheels, but for the size of the push chair, I don't think that fold is too bad. Now we're going to get it back up so we need to undo that clasp here not really sure which way we're going to do this i think that's completely wrong because we're doing it upside down but <sighs> there we go we've got it up and then you can bring that seat unit back up and it should click into place. There we go, okay. All right, so I, I don't like the fold. I don't think it's easy to do. I don't particularly like the fact that you have to give it a couple of goes before you can get it folded. You definitely have to kind of find the knack to be able to do it. And I don't like that you've got three stages to go through to get it folded. I also don't like that the seat unit moves around once you've got it folded so overall i'm not impressed by the fold and it's not particularly easy to get that back up where you've got to get the clasp from underneath you saw how you know all over the place i was to get that up so the fold hasn't impressed me but never mind let's let's move on and let's have a look 
at putting this carry cot on. So our included adapters need to be put onto our carry cot. And to me, it looks like this is just going to insert in. There we go, there's one. Pop our other one in. And let's take the seat unit off. Put that out of the way. And then we can get the carry cot on. Now the carry cot weighs just under 5k, so it's not too heavy. It has got a little bit of weight to it compared to other carry cots, but it is a really sturdy one and quite a large carry cot, so we can kind of see why we've got that extra weight. And this should go onto the frame unit. Hopefully, we can slide this on. There we go. Okay, so a bit fiddly. It'll take a bit of getting used to to get that on. But once it's on, it looks great. In fact, the carry cot is definitely my favourite part of the push chair, and it feels a lot nicer having the carry cot on here than it actually does having the seat unit. So this is really nice. You can use this up to 9k. So somewhere between six and nine months, obviously it depends on your child and how happy they'll be in there once they're sitting up. Um, but it feels really nice on the frame, nice and sturdy. And I really do like that. But it looks like to remove it, it's gonna be really easy because you've got these little black handle bits that pull up on either side of the adapters. And yeah, so that's really easy. That just simply pops off. You've got on the handles this foam cover, which does make it a bit more comfortable for you to push the push chair. And it feels nice to push. It does feel quite heavy, um, but it does weigh over 11K, so it's quite a heavy push chair. And it's not as easy to do one handed as perhaps I'd like. Um, but with two hands, it's really easy to manoeuvre. Today, we're taking a look at the Huck Walk and Care set. This is a new push chair set from Huck and they class this as a premium push chair. And this one also comes with a carry cot, although you can just buy the push chair on its own as well. It retails just under 600 pounds and you can use this set from birth all the way up until about four years of age. So it will take your child up to 22K. And on top of that, you can have 3K in the basket. The pushchair weighs about 11.5k, so it has got quite a lot of weight to it. And from what I've seen, it's got an awful lot of features on it. So it's got a reversible seat, a seat that moves up and down, and also the handlebar moves up and down. And it looks like it's got some good wheels on there as well. So what we're going to do is have a look inside the box, get everything out, set it up, and then we can have a look at all of those features. We're having a look at this in the dark grey colour. So if we have a look in the box, you can see there, we've got really nice grey colour here. And I can see we've all got all sorts of bits and pieces in here. So it's not just the push chair, we've got some accessories as well. So what I'm going to do is empty this box and I'll lay it all out so you can see exactly what you get. Right, so inside the box, these are the contents that you will get. So we've got here the frame of the push chair. Here's the seat for the push chair. We've got our front wheels, our rear wheels. We have got a foot muff or an apron. Yeah, foot muff. We've got a rain cover, a cup holder. And here is the carry cart. And that comes with a very nice looking mattress. And inside there, there's some sort of fabric that I think we're going to need to put round the carry cot somehow. So we'll take a look at that in more detail when we get to that part. So you get quite a lot for your £600. One of the interesting things here is that if you've looked at Huck before, you'll know that they're quite a budget conscious range. So they tend to be at the cheaper end for 
push chairs so it's quite unusual to um, have one at this price point of £600 although obviously with the carry cot you do get a little bit extra for your money um, but they are classing it as I said at the start as a premium push chair so once we've got all of this up it will be really interesting to see um, what the differences are between this premium one and also their normal range so I'm quite looking forward to getting this together and having a good look around it we're going to start off by setting up the push chair itself so as I said this is the frame so let's have a look and see how we unlock this so there is a little like clasp here that you pull up i think that's going to unlock the frame for us there we go okay frame all clicked into place now unusually with huck it looks like the wheel is going to be really easy to do now again if you've ever had a huck product you'll know that the wheels normally come with pins and it can be quite fiddly to put the wheels in but as this is a premium product this looks like they are just going to slot straight into place which is nice so here are our rear wheels nice big rear wheels and we are going to just slot them straight in there you go. And this one. And then our front wheels are just going to slot in here. So I can pick it up. That's it, turn it till it clicks. Next one. There we go. Okay, that's pretty simple to do. So all four wheels are on, really easy to do. They all just click into place, so you're going to have no issues there at all. And next up is to put the seat unit on. Now, this seat unit can go on parent-facing or world-facing which is brilliant. I mean, who doesn't love that? It's really handy to have. And it looks like we're just going to slot it into place on the frame. So you can see here, we're just matching up the bits on the seat onto the frame and it's just going to slot into place by the look of it. There we go. Okay. So that is your seat on. Right, so now we've got that push chair set up, I'm going to move on to the carry cot to get this ready to put onto the frame. So it's a, it folds flat. We can show you this properly if we put the hood down. Okay, so you can see there, it folds flat. So that's for easy storage, which is a nice little touch. Let's take these off. So you'd be able to, I don't know, put that in the bottom of a wardrobe or on the top of a wardrobe in a cupboard, something like that when you've finished using it um, and keep it safe. So you've got everything you need for the curry cot. Obviously, it comes with a apron. It comes with a really nice mattress here as well. So you, you're good to go straight away on it and it won't need adapters. It's going to slot straight onto the frame of the push chair. So... If we have a look inside of here, we can see because it's lying flat, obviously we need to get this up and it is these bars that we need to get in place. So if you can see here, we've got these little metal parts on the top and bottom of the cardboard part of the carry cart. And what we need to do is move those bars onto these little metal parts. You can see there's an insert here where that bar is going to sit. So. We're going to use these little um, fabric bits that they've put on the bar. I'm going to pull this and that slot into place. And then we need to do that on the other one as well. Find where the fabric bit's gone. There it is. Slot that into place. There we go, okay. Now I'm not gonna lie, this is fiddly. 
in fact I haven't quite got that in place it's you really need to give it a hard tug okay there we go right so we've got it in place it's not the easiest thing to do um, I'm sure once you get um, the knack of it it will be fine um, but to start with you really do need to give that quite a tug to get that into position however we can see once it's in place that this bit of fabric that I thought we needed to do something to automatically goes into position and it looks really smart as well really nice grey light grey material quite soft looks really cozy and it's a really good size so if we pop our mattress on which has got a nice quilted effect to it pop that in there we go that looks really nice and comfortable for your little one it's nicely padded again same um, type of material as this it's just got a different pattern so it's not ultra ultra soft but it definitely looks nice and cozy and I can see here or oh, we've got some zips going all the way around let's have a look so what that's going to mean is this fabric you'll be able to remove that and give it a wash if you need to so now we've got this set up we can have a little quick look around it you can see there that you've already got the apron attached this is completely detachable with a zip and it's a nice thick material that's definitely going to give a lot of warmth to your child quite smart looking i'd say and then we have our hood which i think we put into place using these little black buttons there we go so it clicks into place so the hood is upf 50 plus so that's going to give some sun protection to your little one it provides actually loads of shelter it's a really nice thickness um really sturdy once you've clicked it into place and you've got this nice leverette detailing i'm guessing that's part of um what they're going for with their premium range and let's have a look if we turn it around Oh, what we got here? Oh, okay. So there's a nice little zipped part here. Oh, that's good. Little zipped part there that you can pull down, and that's going to give some ventilation to your child in the hot months. And if we pull this up, you can see we've got more mesh here, which again is just going to give a really nice bit of ventilation to your child. I can see another zip here. So let's have a look. Ah, there you go okay so if you wanted to you could open that hood up completely as well all right so that looks nice the curry cot really smart very very sturdy some nice little extras on there with the ventilation windows and a really nice mattress and a really good apron so i like the look of that let's move on to the push chair now so i have to say the the frame is just like a matte black plastic it's very light it's probably not quite as premium looking as I was hoping for but it does look smart um, it looks like a nice looking push chair and I can see from the seat unit that it actually does a lot because you can adjust the height of it and as I said you can move it either parent facing or forward facing so that's a really nice um, feature to have really useful as well I particularly like a seat that goes up and down it's really rare to find it and you do normally only find it on more expensive push chairs um, because it's just a little handy feature if you're taller and you like to have your child up as close to you as possible when you're parent facing and also it's a really good feature to have if you're um, sitting in a cafe or something and you want to have your child kind of at the table with you so we can look at that in more detail in a moment right first sight we can see we've got a very very padded seat we've got this quilted looking material again so it's not particularly soft material but it is extremely padded so it's going to be quite comfortable for your little one and we've got this leverette detailing again which is obviously a theme here with this push chair because we also have it on our handle as well okay if we start looking at the wheels these are rubber wheels 
and they are foam filled so they're puncture proof so you don't have to worry at all about punctures for them um, but what it will mean is that this is an all-terrain push chair so you can use this either um, on your off-road walks um, if you're going into maybe walking down the path of a forest maybe you've got bumpy terrain and it will also be good on a in an urban area so all terrain wheels with really no maintenance which is great and you can see here our front wheels are swivel wheels and i can also see you've got some good suspension there you can just see those springs there now that suspension is going to mean that these are going to go over bumps very nicely the front wheels are lockable, so if it's extremely bumpy terrain, you'd want to lock those front wheels into place to make it easier for you to push. And if we spin it round, you can see here our rear wheels are quite a lot larger. And, oh, I can see here, you can see the suspension on the back wheels here, which is a rather nice large coil, which again just means it's going to be really smooth on whatever terrain it is that you're pushing the push chair on. Whilst we're down here, here is our brake bar. It's just put your foot on it, press it down, the wheels are locked, put it up, the wheels move, really easy to use. And here is our basket. The basket's a bit disappointing, to be honest. It's really shallow. So although it's not a, a bad size, we can see we're easily going to be able to get a changing bag in there, perhaps a coat or something like that. Um, it's not very secure, so you'd need to be a bit careful about what you put in there. Now, as I mentioned at the start, the push chair takes 22k, so that's the weight that your child can go up to. But the basket itself is on top of that, so you can put an extra 3k in. So overall, it's 25k, but 3k of that is what you have in the basket, so just bear that in mind. I'll take a look at the seat unit now. So the fabric is really, really padded. It's not particularly soft. In fact, it's quite... Um, coarse and it's quite shallow as well you can see it's quite a shallow seat there's no side bits here um, so in a forward position that seems really nice um, but that would concern me a little, little bit having it on a lie flat that there will be no kind of side protection for your child if you're putting them in there as a small baby anyway as I said it is really padded um, again in a lovely grey colour it's not really as premium as I hoped perhaps the fabric would be. Um, but one of the really great points about this seat unit is that the seat moves up and down, which we looked at briefly. So I will show you how that works. Well, we can see here, you've got these little parts that push in, these little buttons on either side of our seat unit. And using those, you can pull the seat up so that is mid position and if we go again that is the highest position so you've got three positions there high one midpoint and then the lowest that it goes which is there so that gives you um, a decent amount of choice as to what height you would like that seat to sit at and is a nice feature to have it's quite an unusual feature to have on a push chair you normally do find that on more expensive ones um, so it's a nice handy thing to have especially like I said if you're taller and you want to have your baby sitting up closer to you or if you're sitting them up at a table when you're out and about now the other thing that the seat unit does is as I've said earlier you can have it weld or parent facing and to do that you would use exactly the same buttons on either side of your unit you would lift it up completely and then all you would do is spin it round. So just reattach it, slot it into place and there you have it parent facing. And we've got this on the highest setting and one of the nice things about when they're parent facing with this having been able to have the seat up high is that you're going to keep them really nice and close to you. So if they like to have eye contact with you, they need that reassurance, you'll be able to do that really well with this seat unit. Right, let's pop that back round. So it is easy to pop the seat unit on and off. It's light enough that it's not really going to cause you any hassle at all. And it goes in really easily. Okay, so 
We also have here an adjustable footrest and you've got these buttons on either side and you can move it down and then you can have it higher up perhaps when your child's smaller or they're napping. If we have a look here, the um, bumper bar is detachable so there's two little buttons on either side. You press that in and then you can remove the bumper bar completely. So it's nice to have the choice as to whether you want to have it in there or not. And having a look at the straps, I can see there are two positions to put them in. So all you would have to do is re-thread it from the back. So you'd push that through the seat unit and then you'd re-thread it onto the lower, the lower part if that's what you wanted. And you can also see here these loops. So if you had these straps on the lowest part, you could then thread the strap through the loops and it would bring it lower still. And the reason you'd want to do that is if you've got a very small baby in the seat unit, it would just keep the straps low enough for them, keeping them nice and safe without the straps kind of rubbing against their neck or their head. We've got a five point harness here, nothing particularly special to shout about, just a normal five point harness. We've got some plain shoulder, um, sorry, some chest pads here to help it be more comfortable for your child. So there's nothing really out of the ordinary in terms of the straps, they're exactly as you would expect. And let's take a look at this hood. Right, so, oh, I can see here. We've got it unzipped, so it's actually an extendable hood. So we'll have a look at it as it would be normally before you extend it. Okay, there we go. So that's a hood in its normal position. It gives really decent coverage. It's a very thin hood, but you can see here we've got these ridges which is gonna keep it perfectly stable. It's not gonna be flapping around at all. And it's also got sun protection in it as well. And as we just saw, it is extendable. So if I undo these poppers, you can bring it out even further. And then if we unzip, you can bring it out further still. The hood is a really nice touch. If you haven't had a push chair with an extendable hood before, they are amazing, especially if you're trying to get your child to go to sleep in the push chair. What it's going to do is give them more privacy in there. It's going to stop them from being interrupted from the outside world. Uh, so it's really useful to have. And of course, it's going to give them a lot of coverage from not only from the sun, but if it's windy or perhaps it's just um, spitting a tiny bit, this is going to be great for you. I love an extendable hood. Again, it's normally a feature that you'll find when the price point is a bit higher on a push chair. So you can see there, we have got three different positions we can put that hood in. So that's a nice feature. We'll turn this around now and have a look at the recline. Right. I'm gonna bring this down to the lowest setting. So our recline, is a one-handed recline and you can see here we have got this little button that we push in and that's going to move the push chair down now normally when they're like this you don't have a lot of choice in recline positions that looks like that's going to be the case here so if we push that button in let it naturally drop to its next point okay spin that round so this is going to be your midway point and if we Press that button in and let it drop again. Got it caught on the, got it caught on the handlebar here. Bring that up. There we go. Now this is on its lie flat position. Now, just before when we were looking at the seat, I mentioned that there's not a lot of side fabric here, um, which is absolutely fine when you've got them in upright position, but you can see if they're lying flat there, they're very exposed um, because there's nothing protecting them at all. Obviously you can put the hood up, which will help a little, um, but there's just nothing on these sides. Um, personal preference, personally, I just like to have some side material here where it's a bit higher, just to cocoon your child in. Uh, you might not care at all, in which case it won't be a problem. It's just something to note. I'll spin this back round. Let's have a look at the handlebar. So the handlebar is adjustable and you've got this sliding mechanism here and a button underneath and you would press down on that button and 
sorry, you would slide the mechanism first, press down on the button, and then you can move the handlebar to whichever height you'd like. So obviously, depending on your height, you can move it about to make sure it's really comfortable. Adjustable handlebars are especially good if you have a partner that is much taller or shorter than you, because it means that you can buy the push chair without worrying about if one of you is going to struggle to push it. So we get a nice touch covered in the leverette material, which does make it comfortable to push. The only thing I'd say is it does feel quite flimsy. If you can hear and see that, it doesn't particularly seem sturdy to me. So that's, you know, just something that I'm thinking is a shame really for something that they're advertising as a premium product. It's a shame it's not a little bit more sturdy on the frame. Let's take a look at the fold. So they're advertising this as a one-handed fold. Sometimes when you have a push chair that says it's a one-handed fold, it's not actually quite one-handed. So let's see if this one is. So to fold it, I believe you'd have to have the seat um, forward facing. So if you've had it parent facing, you just quickly need to spin that round. You also need to have the seat all the way up. So let's push that up and we need to pull that hood in. Okay, so there's a couple of steps to doing this. And the first step is to push this seat unit forward. So using that little button that we used when we reclined the seat, you would push that in. And instead of putting it back, you're gonna put it forward as far as it will go. So you can see there, that's as far as it will go now. And next we need to use this white button and push that in. And then that collapses it even further. And now the rest of the fold is done using the handlebar. Now I have tried this prior to filming and I'm, it was quite fiddly to do. There is a little bit of a knack to getting it to go down, which hopefully I'm going to do first time and show you. So you're going to use this same mechanism that you used when you um, moved the handlebar up and down. And you're going to push the handlebar all the way down and then kind of give it a flip backwards. And that's going to push the handlebar down. So let's give it a go. So we're sliding. We're going to push that button in. We're going down. Nope, haven't done that first time. Let's try that again. There we go. Okay. You have to give it a real push to get it down and kind of like move it to the side as well. It's fiddly, to be honest. So now you've got it in this position, you can see here there's a little place for your hand to go and you would then put it up and there you have it in its folded position. So you can see it stands in its folded position but it is, if you look around here, it's rather large. The seat unit sticks out quite a lot. So if you've got a large boot, this isn't going to be an issue. If you haven't got as much space in your boot, what you'll probably would have to do is take the seat unit off and put the seat unit and the frame into your boot separately. It's a shame actually, because it really doesn't push down particularly well. Um, it's a shame that this doesn't go in further. As I said, if you're not bothered though about taking the seat unit off and the frame and having them separately, then it's not going to pose you a problem. Um, the other thing I'm noticing is that you then have the handlebar on the floor. So that's not great really either. Um, yeah, I'm not overly enamored by the fold um, and it was quite difficult to do. So let's try and get it up and see how easy that is to pop it back up. Right, so we're going to have to start off with, I think, let's start off with the handlebar. Okay, so the handlebar, to get it up, you don't use this mechanism that we use to get it down. You use this little part here. Can you see that moves up and down? We're going to put that downwards and then that should release the handlebar. Here we go. Click that into position. Then push down on the handlebar. Okay, so that's all of your wheels now ready. The only thing you have to do now is move the seat unit. It should hopefully click into place. There we go. And that bumper bar moves up. So there you go. That has been clicked into place and you're ready to go. Right, let's move on by trying out the carry cot on the, the frame of the push chair. So we are going to remove the seat unit. Let's pop this down here. 
and we are going to get our carry cart this weighs just over 5k is quite heavy for a carry cart actually um, but it's you know it's quite a large sturdy one so I guess that's where the weight's coming from now this should just click on Ooh, there we go there we are okay so that's really easy to do and actually it's really very nice with the carry cot on so I think I prefer the carry cot unit being on there than I do the seat um, and on first impressions that is because the carry cot just it's so sturdy and it looks a lot nicer quality than the seat unit um, so if you've got a small baby in there they are going to be really comfortable I don't think no you haven't got the option of moving this any higher like we do with the seat unit um, but it's perfectly fine as it is and you can use this carry cot up until your child reaches 9k so that's going to be somewhere between six and nine months so you will get quite a lot of use out of it when you're ready to remove the carry cot off there's these little white buttons and you'll need to push them in there's one on the other side then hopefully this is just going to come off yes okay oh, that's nice okay so that's really nice and easy to do so now that we've had a look at these two Huck pushchair sets individually, I've put them together so we can have a look at the differences and the similarities between both of the sets. So first off, let's start off with the price. So we have here the Walk and Care set, and this set retails at just under £600. And then our Move So Simply set, this retails at £420. Both of these you can use from birth all the way up until 22k and both of the push chairs you can put 3k into the basket so the overall load is 25k so there's no difference there at all. There's a slight difference in weight so this one here is 11.5 and our move so simply is 11.9. The carry cots vary in weight only just this one here is just over 5k this one here is just under. Okay, so we'll start off with um, looking at the wheels and see what the differences are there. So on our walk and care, these are foam filled rubber wheels and they're designed to be used for all terrains. So these are going to be great for urban use or for light. I'm saying off road. It's not really off road for light, bumpy areas. If you want an off road push chair, you would really be looking at air filled tires, but you can use these over most terrains. And with this push chair here, you've got suspension on all four wheels, which is going to make it a smooth ride for your child and also make it easier for you to push over any terrain that is a little bit bumpy. Now with this one here, these are plastic EVA tyres and although you do have a nice suspension on the front wheels, we don't have anything on the back wheels and these plastic EVA tyres are really only suitable for urban areas. So there is a difference there between the two straight away in that this one really you only want to purchase if you don't have bumpy terrain at all to go over and this one you could look at for bumpy terrain and smooth surfaces. Moving on to the seat units, so the things that are similar here is that both of these seat units can be easily removed and you can have them parent or world facing, so that's great to have that on both of them. But with this one here, the walk and care, you can actually adjust the seat height that you can have it in three different positions according to how you want it and this one here doesn't do that. Looking at the materials on both of these seat units, on our uh, walk and care, this is a lot more padded than our move so simply, um, quite a lot, actually a lot more padding on it, but they are both really the same material. The only difference here is that you've got this quilted d design on this one and we don't have it on this one. Um, but in terms of comfort, although this has got more padding, they both feel exactly the same, the material is quite coarse. You might want to look at putting a liner on if you were going to use this for a newborn and I would say that for both of the pushchairs. 
both seats you're able to adjust the footrest we can see here the difference between the two is that this one is a lot more roomy than this one the actual seat sizes look really similar they're both quite slim um, which is absolutely fine up until your child reaches that upper age limit of about four years old and at that point it might become a little bit tight for them in terms of the width of the seat but there is plenty of height in both the straps are the same on both, you've got two positions on both of them, both of them have these loops so that you can pull them down even further if you've got a smaller child in there and they both have the same uh, straps and clasps so no difference there other than obviously the colours of the pads. Both have got removable bumper bars, the difference here is you've got this leverette detail on the bumper bar, this one here is just a plain material and this is because this is the premium push chair so they're going for a more premium look. Now we're going to look at hoods, so if we pull this hood down here, there's quite a big difference in the hoods of these two, this is very thin and clunky. This is a, this is quite thin, but it's not a clunk, not as clunky as this one is here. And the difference here is this is extendable, and you're able to extend it either to this part here, or if you want to, you can go even further and extend it again. So you can see there, there's a big difference in the hoods. You get loads of coverage because this is an extendable hood. We get less so here. Both have got ventilation windows, so you can see we've got a nice big one here when you extend the hood out. This one here, if you lift the fabric over, you've also got some fabric mesh for ventilation. Both of the push chairs have got extendable handlebars, which is great. So you can put it in whatever position it is that you need to have it in to make it comfortable to push. Again, the difference here is the materials that's used on the handlebar. We've got leverette on our more expensive one, and we've got this plain foam on the cheaper one. Moving down to the recline, both of these seats recline in three different positions. So you've got the upright, a mid-range, and then you've got a lie flat. And both of them have got a button or a clasp on the back to release the recline. So you push that button in, let it go. This one here, you pull the clasp up and let it go. Really, there's obviously a slight difference in the mechanism. One's button, one's a clasp, but they're exactly the same. They give you the same amount of reclines and they give you a really nice sitting forward position and a nice lie flat one as well. Both baskets are a decent size. You do have on both of them uh, quite a shallow basket and also you don't have any ends, any high ends here. So I would say on both of them, you would need to be careful about what you're putting in that basket because it might not be particularly secure. Onto the brakes, the brakes are just a press down pedal on both. You just use your foot to flick it down and flick it up, so there's no real difference there. The folds of the push chairs are exactly the same. You need to move the seat forward on both, then you collapse the seat forward even more, and then you use the handlebar to bring the whole push chair down. It's exactly the same mechanism in that you need to have the handle all the way up and then you use the buttons on the handlebar to push it down and then you give it like a little jerk and you bring the handlebar backwards and that will collapse the push chair. So there's no difference in the folds and they're both, I would say, quite difficult to do. If you've seen previously in the video when I've shown you how to fold them, I found the folds difficult on both of them. So there's no difference there in regards to whether you're spending the money on the more expensive one or you're going for the cheaper one. Okay, so now for the carry carts. Both of these carry carts are really nice looking. They're both as sturdy as each other. The main differences you've got here is they're going for a higher end look. So you've got this quilted material. You've got a zip for the apron rather than a button. As you can see here, this is a button one but they do the same job it's just the look of them really and you've also got again this lever um, effect here and we've just got plain foam handle here the only real differences with the carry cot is that the uh, walk and care carry cot doesn't require you to have the adapters to pop it onto the frame and with our Move So Simply, you do need to attach adapters to pop it onto the frame, but the adapters come included in a set. 
Other differences are the mattresses and the inside. So if you have a look here on our more expensive one, we've got a much more luxurious looking inside. We've got the nice quilted fabric again, obviously in a nice gray jersey material. And on this one here, our cheaper one, we've got a cheaper looking white material, although it's still very soft and snug. And we've got a much thinner, cheaper looking mattress. Lastly, on the curry cots, the other difference is if we turn them around so we can see the back of the hoods. On this hood here, you've got little sections that you can undo and create some ventilation. So that's really nice to have it on the more expensive one. And we don't have that on this one here. The hood is just as it is. So if you're looking at both of these sets, let's just really quickly summarize why you would pay the extra to go for the walk and care. So the extras that you're getting, because they're obviously quite similar push chairs, you can see just by the look of them, they're very similar and they come both with carry cots. But what you're paying for here is the um, leverette detailing on the push chair, which is giving it a slightly better look. And you're also paying for the fact that that seat can height adjust on the push chair, and we don't get that on our cheaper one. Also, you've got slightly better tires um, because you've got the foam filled rubber tires, which are all terrain. And on our cheaper push chair, we've got plastic EVA, which really only can be used on urban or smooth areas. As to which one you go for, it really depends on whether you can justify paying nearly £200 more for the few extras that the walk and care provides because actually they're so similar that unless you're absolutely desperate to have a seat that height adjusts and in particular you want all-terrain wheels there's not that many differences I feel in my opinion to justify the £600 price tag of the walk and care in comparison to £420 for our So Simply push chair. I hope that this has given you a really good overview of both the push chairs, what the differences are and whether it would be worth um, splashing out a little bit more money on the premium push chair in comparison to the cheaper push chair. Um, but if you do need more, any more information on either of the products, you can go on to buggybaby.co.uk. And if you've got any questions at all, please do leave them in the comments. Thank you for watching.